Namaste. My name is Pavitra Chakravarti, and I'm here today with Kalyan Vishwanathan and Srina Chakravarti. We will be discussing Reza Aslan's uh, program called Believer that aired on CNN last Sunday. So Kalyan and Srina, would you introduce yourselves? Sure. My name is uh, Kalyan. Uh, I uh, am the president of Sanatana Dharma Foundation, which is a non-profit organization serving the Hindu community in the Dallas, Texas area. And I'm also executive vice president of Dharma Civilization Foundation, which is another non-profit based in Los Angeles, California. Namaste. I'm uh, Srinath Chakravarti. I'm Dallas coordinator for Samskrit Bharati, also still part of Sanatana Dharma Foundation, which Kalyan has started a few years back. And I think it's a great opportunity to bring this information to the Hindu community in Dallas and beyond. Thank you. So let's uh, jump right in. So with regards to the program Believer that aired last uh, Sunday on uh, CNN, Reza Aslan starts the program by saying that this is a show on Hinduism. And then he launches into a, a one-hour segment. And f towards the end, he basically backtracks and say that while whatever he was portrayed in that program was not representative of mainstream Hinduism, that this was a very small sect, the Aghori sect. However, he has already interwoven caste as an evil that is still rampant in, in, the, in, in Hinduism and among Hindus. Right. What are your thoughts on this very strategic and shrewd manipulation? Well, I mean, you know, um, if, if his objectives, Reza Aslan's objective was to portray Hinduism in uh, as bizarre and negative a light as possible, we must acknowledge that he accomplished his objective. <laughs> With absolute yeah. success. Yeah, and, and terrific success, you know. So, you know, he was uh, smart enough to get into CNN, get a wonderful spot, uh, an hour spot. Prime right? time. Prime time spot. And uh, do whatever he intended to do. And we've got to give him credit for accomplishing his intention, which is to you know, confuse Hinduism and, 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 and create this gray area between what is a, a sect which is a very, uh, you know, at the most a fringe sect within Hinduism with the mainstream uh, narrative about Hinduism. So, it's a very clever conflation in which he can say, uh, he can say both things. He said, uh, he can say this is Hinduism and he can, he can also say, but this is not Hinduism. So, therefore, you know, it gives him deniability around saying that, you know, but I'm not only talking about the Aghori sect, I'm not talking about mainstream Hinduism. But oh, by the way, uh, but caste is a mainstream problem and after all, the Aghoris are also trying to escape from the, from the caste system. So, this is, we must uh, acknowledge it's brilliantly done. And at, this, at the end of it, he uh, basically backtracks saying that, you know, we all should be happy. I'm just trying to explore religion and experience it through the eyes of the, the particular religion that I am researching. And so he still covered his tracks and made himself look, you know, perfectly academic in the process. Right. But all along in the first 40 minutes, he has yeah. cast aspersions and, and literally like slinged things that, that are absolutely unmentionable. Srinath? Yeah, and, and I want to uh, pick up on that interesting point as Kalyan made, which is, you know, uh, Riz Aslan appears to have given himself an out very intelligently at the end of the show while accomplishing his objectives of, you know, casting in those in poor light. I also think that at some level this represents, like to quote uh, Rajiv Malhotra and other folks, it represents the next gen of these uh, uh, TV show writers <coughs> and other academics. Right, the, their uh, predecessors in colonial era went out and out up until the 1960s and 70s too, because made no apologies about depicting Hinduism in negative uh, fashion. Right, all their documentaries, their shows. Now this next gen wants to say both, and up give the appearance of being fair, which is where the dangerous part comes. Right, okay. give the appearance of being fair while slowly slipping in certain tainted viewpoints that will go a long way in the public memory. So I think that's the danger here, and that's what we need to expose. Yeah. That this is by no means an evenly yeah. matched uh, show. So Srinath, you brought up a very good point. The fact that this has been so cleverly cloaked. Kalyan, do you see this as being 
uh, California textbook part two, where this could be depicted in schools and other uh, educational institutions in the future as being representative of Hinduism? Yeah, uh, very possibly. You know, see, the thing is, uh, what has happened is a, is a mainstream news media channel like CNN with an international audience has given its, its own stamp of legitimacy to a, a narrative about Hinduism. And it is quite possible that this will be played and replayed uh, in many, many environments. Uh, and uh, it's possible that uh, school children could view it, you know. So, I think the, the effects of that are going to be uh, long-ranging long and uh, mm -hmm. quite uh, negative for our uh, young children who are trying to make sense of Hinduism in their own minds. And uh, this would be a deadly, uh, you know, artifact. Exactly. Uh, <coughs> So Kalyan, um, he mentioned two sentences that have all that have been, to me personally, it was, it was seriously, I think it it was spoken by someone who does not understand it or view this the way it was, classically meant to be, um, um, to be as a functional classification. So he calls he to quote him. He says, in India or in Hinduism, there exists a religiously defined social construct called the caste system. The Aghoris are trying to abandon caste system embedded in Hindu spirituality. So I would like to call your attention to the fact that first he says it's a religiously defined social construct and the fact that he also says it's tied to Hindu spirituality. Yeah. In your opinion, is it appropriate to consider caste, caste system and not Jadi Varna as being a religiously defined system? Okay. Now this is said very complex question okay first of all see it is very hard to say that it is not religiously sanctioned or spiritually sanctioned system right. okay if you say it is not then you'll have to uh, hindus as hindus we'll have to then account for the the extraordinary depth of uh, conversation in our uh, Shrutis, Puranas, Itihasas, uh, Sutras, Bhashyas, Bhagavad Gita and so on. I mean, it's, so therefore, the, the Varna Jati system is pervasive in Hindu literature. This is a fact. Okay? Yes. You cannot, uh, you cannot run away from this fact. Okay? Right. So, but, but if you then say the opposite, which is what he's saying, which is it is a religiously sanctioned system, right? You know, sanctioned by the texts, the the uh, the literature of uh, Hinduism, and therefore the whatever there is by way of discrimination right. or exploitation within the system is also religiously and spiritually sanctioned right. okay right. now if this is the argument he is making right. you see now we will pick this up in more detail okay but this places Hindus on the whole on the back foot right. because we are not equipped to deal with this criticism very well right. you know so one response that Hindus give is the caste system has nothing to do with Hindu religion. It is outside the pale of Hindu religion. It's a social problem. It's a social construct. Social construct. There is a social problem that is outside mainstream Hinduism. Okay, so it's sort of an evil that crept in later on, right. but somehow it was not part of Hinduism. Okay, right. see, but this argument is very difficult to to sustain. Right. Okay, we'll say more about that. At the same time, if you acknowledge that it is part of Hinduism, then it means Hindus as a whole, as a whole society stand uh, accused and indicted for practicing discrimination and uh, exploiting uh, each other through various castes across 5000 years. This is however the mainstream narrative about Hindus. 
so we are you know we should understand this all hindus should understand this that we are we have been accused of being human rights violators from the very beginning of time even though human rights as a concept itself was invented only about 100 years ago or, or so 150 years ago maybe right but we have been found in violation for 5000 years of human rights which itself was invented only 150 years ago but the interesting thing is you only will have an organization to make sure human rights are maintained only when you see instances of it not being maintained when it was not part of the hindu civilization there was no need to explicitly say human rights because yeah. everyone was treated fairly mm. and equally so where is the question of rights when everyone was seen no i mean this is a very important topic uh, pavitra see indian society hindu society was organized not on the basis of rights but on the basis of duties right see when we say dharma we are talking about obligations and duties right you know so a brahmana had dharma had a particular dharma to fulfill so did akshatriya so did vaishya and so on so the 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 this is a problem of trying to understand a duty based system from a rights based lens right okay. you see it completely distorts the the system i'll say it another way see if you try to understand the varna jati system as a system of interdependence and coexistence okay. right where everybody coexists nobody is exploited nobody is relegated to a uh, you know a, a kind of a, a, a state of uh, you know in invalid right. in illegitimate existence then it will lend itself to a certain way of understanding however if you look at it through the lens of exploitation and discrimination exclusively you get a very distorted understanding of the varna jati system right so the for, for hindus today current day hindus right this is the problem you know they we are living in an era where competition exploitation discrimination human rights you know these are the uh, sort of the language domain in which we live mm. we do not live today unfortunately in an era of interdependence coexistence uh, of dharma of duties of obligations etc and therefore the system is fundamentally appears distorted even to us even to the hindus right okay let alone for outsiders okay right. so when outsiders <laughs> want to uh, uh, study hinduism uh and uh, they bring their own predispositions their own biases to the their study it is very easy to pick up on the caste system sure and deliver the most damning indictment on hinduism if it suits the your purpose your which purpose. is to which is you, you, to begin with is to damn it right know? which was not a fair and unbiased depiction of hinduism but yeah. to specifically cast aspersions on something shrinath so raisa aslan apparently claims that he had an immersion in hinduism which was one week so in that time he has supposedly mastered concepts of karma and reincarnation the caste system and um other constructs that we are familiar with in your opinion who would you say is probably in a right position to to pass judgment on these very very esoteric concepts okay that, that's that's great, great 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 question to see on this i'm going to do a little bit of a blame game because i would like to say that um, you know just like uh, the onus of um, dharma is duties and obligations right as hindus the inheritors of the world's largest scriptural legacy and uh, antiquity we have an obligation to become well versed in our uh, dharma and our uh, scriptures and not be illiterate in samskrita right. and so having not set any baseline for for what it takes to be conversant in hinduism we are unable to show what it means for someone else to be able to learn hinduism because we haven't learned it ourselves so 
that's a void which allows these actors to come squarely into some you know uh, some uh, come come from a tangent mm -hmm. and then enter into them and say you know i spent a week here so i should be qualified and then we have nothing to counter that because we haven't even spent one week learning our own <laughs> scriptures correct so so that that's a gap we need to address so uh, may i may i sure. respond to that you see the thing is when you say we haven't learned right it's not true that the whole of hindu society hasn't learned correct. we have we have our own centers of authority you know uh, uh, people who are we consider eligible commentators on hinduism you know so if you ask the question who can speak for hinduism correct. right <coughs> uh today the people who can authoritatively speak on hinduism are our gurus and acharyas of various sampradayas on account of their commitment to their traditions on account of their sadhana on account of their renunciation from a hindu society standpoint they are the authoritative spokespersons however they are not equipped to come on cnn and deliver a, a, a presentation on hinduism you see right. see they they sort of uh, stay in their ashrams in their mandirs and their uh, you know the places where they are most comfortable with and uh, that part of hindu society which is eager to learn goes there and gets authentic knowledge mm -hmm. and you know and i can speak for myself until i went out in search of a guru in a remote ashram somewhere my own understanding of hinduism was very vague and very confusing right and what you pick up on your school textbooks and the mainstream uh, environments wikipedia and the yeah. mainstream media is so distorted that's right right so kalyan ji mm. we are going to take a short break okay and we will be back in a few moments thank you <laughs> 